Hi, all. Welcome to second episode of Optometry series. I'm very happy to welcome you all on behalf of Dr. Agarwal's Institute of Optometry. The main aim and objective of this series is to discuss in detail about various topics that are undiscussed or least discussed in the field of optometry. In the same note, today's topic is visual perceptual skills assessment and its significance. I'm very happy to welcome Maheshwari ma'am. Hi, ma'am. Hello, Gomadi. Thank you. Thank you for the arranging this. Okay, so I'm so happy uh, uh, to join in the second episode of uh, Optometry uh, series. So here we have a very special guest, uh, uh, Ms. Valarmati. Uh, like, uh, she's got immense experience in the field of uh, uh, research and uh, she's been doing the research in autism for the past seven years. So, and, uh, you know, when you see these children, it's, it's, uh, it's really very uh, difficult to handle such children and then uh, uh, investing your life on their uh, development and uh, it, it requires a lot of patience. So, uh, and, uh, you know, it is, it is not just a treatment like any other therapy. It is, uh, it involves a lot of time and uh, it really takes a lot of effort and it's life changing for the child and uh, especially for the parents and it is it, it gives immense pleasure uh, to have such an expert in this uh, platform so and uh, yeah i would request you to go ahead with uh, introducing our student speaker and our expert here thank you Kumadi. thank you so much ma'am uh, we have with us the mc for today miss falak from third year hi falak Hello, ma'am. So thanks for joining us today, Falak. So introduce our topic uh, and the moderator today. Good evening to one and all present here. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to our second optometry series. The topic of today's optometry series is visual perceptual skill assessment and its significance. It's indeed a great honor and pleasure to welcome the moderator for today's session, Ms. Valarmati Arunachalam. Ma'am is an optometrist currently working as assistant professor at Sri Ramachandra Institute of Higher Education and Research. Ma'am is an optometrist with over two decades of experience in providing comprehensive eye care, including contact lens services, low vision care, pediatric care, and vision therapy. Currently, ma'am is involved in the diagnosis and management of functional vision deficits of children with autism, cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, development delay, and also children with learning disability and providing vision therapy for children with special needs to stabilize their vision and visual perceptual skills. Ma'am has also presented papers in national and international conferences and published papers in Scopus Index journals. Currently, Ma'am is an associate member of College of Optometrists in Visual Development, active member of Optometry Council of India, Indian Optometric Association, and Optometric Association of Tamil Nanbargal. It's a great pleasure having you, Ma'am. I hereby welcome today's speaker, Ms. Deepika, fellow in Dr. Agarwal's Eye Hospital. I request Ms. Deepika to start this session. Hi, uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. So now we are going entering into the presentation. Okay, good afternoon to everyone. So here we are going to start our presentation. So our presentation is about today is visual perceptual skill assessment and its significance. So what is the full screen mode, uh, slideshow mode? Just a minute. Man.
If you can't get the slideshow, uh, so at least you can do, you know, uh, magnification thing so that you have the maximum magnification, maximum zoom. Okay, please go ahead. Okay, so we are going to start about visual perception. Visual perception is defined as the total process responsible for the reception and cognition of visual stimuli. So here are the two functions that is sensory function and specific mental function. So the sensory function is the process of extracting and organizing information from the environment. The specific mental component provide the capacity to organize, structure, and interpret the visual stimuli, giving meaning to what is seen. Together, these two components enable a person to understand what he or she sees. Uh, visual perception allows a person to make accurate judgments on the size, configuration, colors, and spatial relationships of objects. Visual perception is among the last skill of the child develops, that is the eye and coordination is a prerequisite. Components, so here we are going to enter into visual perceptual skills. So visual perceptual skills involve the ability to organize and interpret the information that is seen and give it a meaning. Our eyes send a large amount of information to our brains to process every single second. If our eyes are sending us the proper information in the way that makes sense, then the brain can process it and thus allowing us to form thoughts, making decisions and create action. So here are the components. So visual perception uh, have two components that is visual receptive component and visual cognitive component. In visual receptive component, anatomy of the eye on ocular system, there are two. But ocular system uh, is, having a main uh, is having a main part that is fixation eye movements, acuity, accommodation, binocular fusion, stereopsis, and convergence. So visual fixation is fixing one's gaze on anything. And then eye movements are the two types of eye movements are used to gather the information from the environment, pursuit eye movement and saccadic eye movements. So now we are entering into visual cognitive component. Uh, in visual cognitive components, there are two skills. One is motor and non-motor skills. Uh, the visual attention and visual discrimination comes under motor skills. So in, in visual discrimination, there are two. One is object perception and spatial perception. In object perception, form consistency, visual closure, and figure ground plays a major role. And in spatial perception, position in space, distance perception, and topographical orientation are there. The visual memory and the visual imagery are the non-motor skills. Visual cognitive components. So the visual cognitive components include the visual attention, visual memory, discrimination, and integration of visual stimulus with other sensory modalities. So visual attention is a focusing on one part of the visual field while ignoring the others. So the four components of the visual attentions are alertness, selective attention, visual vigilance, divided or shared attention. So alertness, it reflects the natural state of the aerosol. Second one is selection, selective attention. So it is the ability to choose relevant visual information while ignoring the less relevant information. Visual vigilance. Visual vigilance is conscious mental effort to concentrate and persist at the visual task. Divided or shared attention is the ability to respond to two or more simultaneous tasks. So we are entering into the first quiz. Providing a clue from interactive part of today's session. We have a timer running up. So based on visual attention, look at the picture and answer for the question. People who are joining in YouTube, do answer in the live chat. Now we are entering into the significance. So as we observe the environment around us, that information is stored in our working memory so that we, we are aware of potential hazardous around us. This sort of focus allows us to perform 
everyday tasks such as walking and driving without injuring ourselves. Difficulties may include the deterioration, the deterioration of visual attention abilities is common with dementia and is usually the first indicator of cognitive impairment following the memory loss. When these abilities decline, the visual field becomes smaller, hindering performance in everyday tasks that require visual search, such as reading, driving a car, or identifying someone in a group. Actually, poor vision it isn't, it isn't a memory cause of motor vehicle accidents, but limited visuospatial field are the six times more likely to crash compared to those with no or more in minimal impairment. Now we are uh, getting into visual discrimination. So visual discrimination is the ability to detect features of stimuli for recognition, matching, and categorization, divided into object form and spatial form. So here it is, visual discrimination is divided into object form and spatial form. Already we have seen that. So in object form, there are three, form consistency, figure ground and closure, and in spatial form, uh, position in space, distance perception, and topological orientation. Activity ideas to promote visual discrimination. Uh, the activity ideas are picture matching, play pairing games like uh, snap, bingo, or dominoes, help out at home, like uh, ask them to matching so uh, ask them to keep matching socks, plates by color, size, or shape, and ask them to spot the differences in pictures, matching stickers to the picture in the sticker books, and finding small objects or animals in the in the pictures, like spot the duck in the Osborn books or find the value, value in where's the value. And we are entering into the quiz. Okay, adding up into second quiz. So we were seeing about visual discrimination. So for you to appreciate, we have brought an image that uh, spots five differences. So people are joining in YouTube, please comment on the live chat and people who are joining in the Zoom, please comment on the Zoom chat. Can you post the YouTube link in this uh, chat? Can you post the YouTube link in this chat? Just a minute. Yes, we can continue. Okay. The next one is object form. Form consistency. So the visual skill that allows us to distinguish one object from another similar object. Though the forms are similar in shape, they are very different in meaning. So the ability to see and distinguish these differences is form consistency. So in this uh, uh, activity, so which shape was cut out of the box and the shape can be turned. So we can see a small shape that have been cut cut it out from there and we have to fix that so we can even change that option uh, we can even change the shape that is given in the option so likewise here we can see uh, the first option will not be suited and second also and we can see the fourth one uh, being tilted we can fix it there likewise we can give the activity to the children Next one. So here is the another quiz. So adding up to third quiz, form consistency. We have an image which has a cut, cut down picture in that. So out of four options, find out which is ideal to fit in that cut out picture. Yes, Deepika, continue. Okay. Which one figure ground? The differentiation between the foreground and the background forms the objects, forms in objects. It is the ability to visually attend to what is important, separating essential important data from distracting surrounding information. So in, so in this picture, 
we could see uh, in the first picture we could see a pen queen and a man so we are we are taking it from the uh, we are eliminating what uh, what doesn't uh, we need so in these six pictures in the first picture we can see a uh, pen queen and the man and in second picture we can see one clown is there and the face of lady is also there and in the third picture we can see two faces that are uh, in the opposite directions and in the fourth one we can see a flower vase in one perception and in other perception we can also see two faces and in the fifth one we can see a question mark also a bird is being there and in the last one we could see one uh, face and apple so like this we should uh, differentiate between the background and the picture so difficulties may arise at school and home uh, with the finding the place on a page finding details of a picture finding a particular item so checking for the traffic when crossing the road reading time tables and seeing relevant information from the board unable to find details from the text or the picture that is comprehensive exercises so the activities for figure ground or word searches board games such as snakes snake and ladders and the scrabble um, and stickle bricks card games mazes or dot to dot tracking pictures and finding letters on a keyboard so a scrabble is a, is a picture given here and here is the dot to dot tracing picture and maze and then the word searches that we usually play and this one is stickle bricks and the last one is filling the missing key in the keyboard this is also an activity we can give to the children now we are entering into visual closure so in visual closure it is the ability to visualize a complete whole when given in incomplete information or a partial picture so it enables a person to quickly recognize ob objects shapes and forms by mentally completing the image or by matching it to information previously stored in the memory so we can see two pictures in it in first one we could see a inverted triangle but it is not fully finished and a normal triangle and in the second picture even though it is not completed we could easily find that it is a dolphin because we have already stored that uh, memory inside it and we can also relate that to this one so now we are entering into the quiz session okay deepika thought us about the visual closure we have brought you four pictures which is not complete but you still you can appreciate what is the pattern of the images so tell me what does the image one recognize 2 3 and 4 tells you is continue deepika so the difficulties uh, in visual closure may include child may not recognize a parts or a whole object picture word reading sp uh, speed will be very slow and very poor at spelling names and does not use his cues in reading difficulty in recognizing the shape or object which is partially obscured and unable to read writing which is done in the dots or recognizing dot to dot pictures and may also have difficulties with the letter formation and problems filling in the missing letters so likewise here an example so they have given a uh, full word with with missing letters so here we can say this as aeroplane but the children may have much difficulty in finding this so the activity ideas to promote the visual closure is to dot to dot pictures and puzzles we can give and draw the left half of the picture and they get the child to complete it also use a half uh, letter or shape and write a sentence and leave out some words so that the child has to write it the correct one or maybe we can also use a word games with the letter what's missing and the next one is spatial form it includes position in space and depth perception so the first one is position in space so it is the visual skill that allows us to process the visual environment around us and the location of the object in respect to ourselves so in this uh, while we are standing in the uh, in, while we are standing in the ground so we can see the shadow that are been uh, changing from the timing so in the morning it will be in one side and uh, becoming afternoon it will be in the other side so while this 
it will it will change the position. The sun will change its position uh, from down to up, so it will change the position. Uh, depth perception is determination of relative distance between the objects, figures, or landmarks, and observance and changes in planes of surfaces. So in this picture, we could see a man is standing and he's in the uh, medium height and he could see two objects in the side. The one object this side is small and it is near to him and the other object is very far and it is large to him. So we can only see this with, uh, with the spatial form and depth perception. And topological orientation is the determination of the location of the objects and setting a route to the location. And the next one is visual imagery. Visual imagery is also known as visualization. So it is the ability to picture people, ideas and objects in the mind eye, even when the objects are not physically present. So visual verbal matching provides foundation for reading, comprehension and spelling. Visual memory. This allows us to record, store and retrieve the information. So it allows integration of visual information with previous experiences. So long-term memory is a permanent storehouse which has an expansive capacity, while the short-term memory have hold a limited number of unrelated bytes of information for approximately 30 seconds. So in this picture, we could see one top picture. So first we have to see the top picture for, uh, ask them to see the top picture for 20 seconds, and then we have to close it and then ask the same, uh, which is matching with the four options. So if the child says that uh, this is the activity that we could give for visual memory. So here is the next quiz. So heading up to the last quiz, based on visual memory, you see four animals here. Try to remember all four animals. Okay. Tell me which animal is missing. So all the quiz answers will be discussed at the last. Yes, Deepika, continue. So the difficulties with the visual memory may include a child is having a deficit in this area, will have difficulty in comprehending long sentences as he tends to forget the initial words of the sentence, read by the time he reaches the end of the sentence. So also, also copying from the blackboard is a troublesome for him as he will forget what he was read and at the time he shifts to the gaze from the blackboard to copy. And the next one is visual sequential memory. So it allows us to store, retrieve information when necessary or useful. Sequential memory helps us to remember and recognize people, places we have been and series of events, equations and procedures. So how many of you can tell uh, the nine planets in same order? So this will, this is the visual sequential memory we can see. So the difficulties with this may include learning to read quickly and efficiently, copying off the board, recalling a series of instructions, remembering where the items have been left, organizational skills, copying from uh, dictation, particularly in the correct sen sentence. So the activity to promote the visual memory is the mem first one is memory tray. So have a number of items on the tray or table in front of the child and allow the child to remember them, then cover the items and ask the child to name one by one. And the next one is Kimscape. So put 10 things from, uh, from around the house on a tray and ask the child to look carefully at them for about 30 seconds. Then take the tray away and ask them to call out what, what they remember. So another way is of playing this game is to cover the things and take one thing away and ask the child uh, to spot what is mix missing. The significance of visual receptive and visual cognitive components. So the interactions of visual receptive and visual cognitive components helps in the following functions. Respond and adjust the retinal stimuli that is anatomic and physiologic integrity. Move both the hand and eye to collect raw data, oculomotor and vestibular control. Effectively interpret visual information, that is visual perceptual ability. Respond to visual cues. 
through efficient limb movements and visual motor ability, accomplish integration of all these abilities. The other tests which uh, can help in development of perceptual skills are post the shape and matching the shapes to the correct opening and flea flag, uh, flea, flea bag. So ask, the, ask to describe a shape or object by uh, feeling it without uh, looking and then describe it again when they can see it. So you can also give this uh, exercise that complete the shape. So if the if they remember that uh, how will be a rectangle, they will complete it. So uh, we can also give PE activities like involving directional and positional language, use symbols as a reminder. So uh, the person who is having difficulty in having uh, um, in directionality, they can also give this directionality uh, paper for their exercise and matching shape to ch chill out using the correct orientation matching picture to the shillout using the correct orientation. So in this, we can give the activity to match the picture to its shadow. And this is, these are also two activities. And the first one is to match the directions from uh, first one to last one. And then uh, draw, the, draw in this, we can also ask them to uh, find out what's missing in the right side to left, left side. So these are the references that we have taken uh, for this presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Deepika. That was a wonderful presentation from you. Now it's time to welcome the moderator for today. Hi, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, well done, Deepika. Uh, that was an exhaustive uh, presentation indeed. And uh, so, so much, now... Uh, to summarize on the whatever uh, Deepika has told, uh, we should understand that visual perception, vision, what is vision? Vision as it is, is just an information processing system. Okay, so vision is uh, nothing but a, a information processing system, which means that it is like your, uh, uh, it is not just like your CPU where it stores all the informations, but here your brain can actually interact, okay, and give you more information rather than more than the CPU, okay. All these days we have understood the brain as just a CPU where you store all the information. No, here what is really happening is there is a lot of processing of information that is happening. So for instance, uh, when you look at a scene, okay, or when you are moving out in your uh, uh, environment or the moment that you are sitting in your table and uh, viewing uh, around you, you get millions of information that enters the eye. But do you note all the informations that you has entered your eye? The moment you see the entire world, millions of information are going inside the eye. But we are not noticing all that information. Why? Because the brain has the process of selecting information okay based on your past experiences the brain actually selects the important informations and only those informations are processed though we have millions of information entering which means that suppose you are standing in the bus stand okay uh, you might have a, a number of uh, uh, vehicles uh, uh, information going into your eyes, number of people's information going into your eyes. There might be some 50 people standing in the bus stop. Okay. But all the information have entered you. But did you notice all these people and all these vehicles? If you are interested in an auto, you will mostly look for an auto. You would miss which bus passed also. Okay, if you're interested in a bus, you will look at all the buses and you will you will not note which auto entered there or went there. Okay, so this can help you to understand that the brain actually does a selection process. Okay, the selection process goes in, uh, in your background and this selection process is based on your past experiences, needs, wants and things like that. 
okay so this entire process of receiving the information selecting the information processing the information probably you if you're waiting for a bus and your bus comes you take an action to move closer to the bus or you make an action like where you want to uh, board the bus or not depending on the uh, crowd inside the bus okay all these decision making things you do isn't it so this uh, this uh, processing happens these all happens in a fraction of a second okay all this put together is what is called as visual perception okay so visual perception uh, uh, the components deepika has brought out very nicely okay from visual attention visual discrimination form constancy visual closure and everything okay so what is happening there is uh, uh, for each of the task she has told you the difficulties faced by the child okay so probably the child may have a uh, difficulty in copying from the board the child may have reading problems the child may have comprehension problems okay you will have people coming in parents coming in and telling you that uh, my child is not able to copy like his peers okay so uh, all these are because uh, the child if there is an and if there is a visual closure issue and the uh, teacher does not have a very good handwriting okay the child is lost because the child cannot recognize it is a n d and the teacher is written or the teacher is written as a r e r what the teacher has written the child cannot comprehend okay because it does not uh, ma matches up for the lost information okay so in the in due course the child does not know what is that alphabet so he cannot recognize and write it okay that is one part of it okay second part of it can be in the focusing ability also okay some ocular motor system problem where he cannot uh, uh, focus from distance to near at a faster pace as it is required uh, to do in the classroom okay all these also can happen so when it comes to visual perception every aspect of the vision is very 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 important in the flow chart that she has told no even if visual attention is not there then the child will have problem the child has problems with visual closure then his performance is lost the child has a difficulty with form constancy or figure ground then his performance is lost okay so everything is going to give a uh or hamper the development of the child or uh, project the child as a non performing uh, child okay so what we will have to do but it does our real examination protocol that we claim it as a comprehensive examination protocol pick out all these uh, uh, components no now our comprehensive examination protocol does not pick out any of these underlying difficulties that the child is actually going through okay so we only take care of the ocular integrity part of it okay uh, apart from ocular integrity we do not assess their oc uh, ocular motor system uh, in depth we don't uh, uh, evaluate their visual perceptual skills in depth okay that is why we lose a lot of patients there are lot of undiagnosed cases okay uh, if you look into the literature every fifth child in the class is having some form of visual perceptual deficit is it he has learning disability he, he is a non performer in the class isn't it so how many of us have taken uh, uh, pains to go evaluate do a comprehensive examination for this uh, child uh, don't tell me that the comprehensive examination is uh, only your uh, uh, refraction anterior segment evaluation and posterior segment evaluation no apart from that you should do an ocular motor system assessment you have lot you she told no she brought out a fixation and eye movement how many of us check fixation uh, can anyone tell which is the normal fixation uh, time limit how when i say fixation skills how many how much time should i uh, hold my fixation on a particular target 
what is the fixation time? It's, um, I don't get to see any chats anyway, because we are in live, we don't want to waste uh, much time. Uh, it's usually 10 seconds, okay? Uh, at least 10 seconds, I should hold my eyes or vision on a particular point for that point to be registered in my brain and for that uh, point to be uh, selected by my brain. Okay. Eye movements. How many of us do uh, developmental eye movement tests or uh, just uh, Ensuko test you can do? Okay, we don't uh, uh, practice all these. These are all easily available uh, uh, in the uh, available tools that we can procure and we can administer to our patients. Okay, but again, we are not uh, uh, not uh, do that. So all the eye movement difficulties that the child is actually uh, facing are masked or not diagnosed at all because simple eye examination does not tell you anything about the eye movement skills. So where eye movements works is like I will give you a simple example. Uh, the dog is playing in the park, okay? So if the child can uh, read this light from the to dog, then a dog to uh, is uh, playing in the park. If it can go from one word to another in a sequential pattern, then his eye movements are perfect. Rather than that, if he sees the and then he jumps to the park, then comes back to the dog, then comes back, uh, go to in or the, then the sequence is lost. So the meaning is lost in the process. Okay, this we can easily find out when we do an eye movement assessment. There are readily available tools, but we don't do it generally in our practice. If anybody is doing it, please let me know as well. Okay, that's one part of it. The next part of it is we uh, uh, see a lot of kids suffering from visual perceptual uh, deficits. Okay, so that uh, they that she also told Deepika has nicely brought about the cognitive part of it. Cognitive part is both motor and non-motor skills, isn't it? So uh, those cognition is really hampered in our children. When we come to uh, diagnosing visual perceptual skills, uh, we have uh, what is called the test of visual perceptual skills, TVPS. Then we have a uh, developmental test of uh, visual perception, DTVP. Uh, then uh, we have Beery VMI, which is a visual motor integration assessment uh, tool. And uh, how many of us use these tools? I don't know. Okay. So we, we need to get, uh, as a true optometrist, we need to get into the practice of doing an in-depth analysis of the patients coming to us. We just oversee the patient's complaints, okay? If the child is not uh, active in sports, if the child is not active in the class, or if the child is constantly fidgeting, if the child is constantly meddling with the uh, uh, peers in the class, then these are all signs that the child is facing some visual challenge, okay? In the developmental stages, vision should become a dominant sense by two years of age. If vision does not become a dominant sense by two years of age, then the child is going to face a lot of difficulties. Okay, So this has to be really evaluated and uh, addressed at the earliest so that the child's develop child does not lose his developmental ages, isn't it? Okay, so uh, this has to be really taken care of in our routine practice. As optometrists, we will have to evolve a, uh, uh, evolve a, a different examination protocol. We just do, should not uh, stick to just uh, doing uh, retinoscopy and uh, subjective refraction and diochrome. There are, uh, there are a lot of things uh, uh, that we need to address and that nobody addresses uh, and nobody can address beyond us. 
uh, that we need to really get into our practice that will that is the key that will define you as an optometrist okay otherwise you will be uh, like one among the lot okay uh, that's why other people will try to uh, dominate you okay so you will have to have a unique method unique strategies and do a really comprehensive when i say comprehensive it should be a really comprehensive my examination takes nearly three to four hours to do an entire visual system assessment it's not just putting drops and making the patient sit okay so it includes a, a lot of uh, entire refraction part of it. Your ocular efficiency is tested. Then your visual perceptual skills are tested. In the visual perceptual skills, we test both motor skills as well as non-motor skills. Okay, and we do have a, a, um, a report writing aspect okay we need to write some two to three pages of report to the patient giving a detailed analysis of uh, what his ocular integrity is what is his ocular efficiency what are his uh, visual perceptual uh, stages okay all these put together becomes a complete uh, ocular examination in my perspective okay uh, so uh, it's not that we uh, is what I am practicing. I am uh, uh, I am telling you. Okay, so this will help you to uh, uh, make uh, the quality improve the quality of life of a lot of children. A lot of children. Okay, it will be a subtle even a subtle convergence insufficiency or a subtle visual perceptual deficit when addressed will give a dramatic uh, change uh, in the people okay uh, it's it's not it's not it this even works for special children not for only uh, normal uh, typically developing kids okay this also works for uh, special children fantastically it works for special children even i have a, a lot of uh, students like um even an autism child is a spell B topper uh, after undergoing vision therapy. That That's the first ever stage appearance of that child. Okay. And uh, there was a topper, autism child who was again a topper in music uh, competition in the school. Okay. So when you really work with the visual system, these children have enormous capacity or knowledge that can be really brought out in a matter of a uh, uh, few months. Okay of working closely with the child uh, so uh, so this we will as optometrists i think uh, uh, we should really get into the practice of uh, having a realistic evaluation we just don't say put the glasses and the child will see the board and write no that doesn't happen really Okay, so uh, we need to really work uh, with the children. We need to get into the practice of uh, um, using all these uh, uh, instruments to do a, a comprehensive, in the meaning, real comprehensive examination of the visual system. Uh, vision is a wonderful organ, okay, just 23 millimeters. But you have a, a ocean uh, or more than an ocean. Even the ocean, you can find the borders. But the aspect of vision, uh, I don't think you can find borders for this, uh, uh, how this visual system uh, works. Okay. That's really a wonderful uh, system. And uh, you are all uh, are optometrists. I should all be proud uh, to be working with the uh, visual uh, system. Uh, but then you do justice to whatever you're doing, then that's the uh, that, that's what is required at this point of time, I think. And uh, I, I think I can take a couple of uh, uh, questions if time permits as well. So that's an oh. excellent uh, note, uh, that was... Uh, no, the information that you said that even an autistic children uh, got a... Uh, spell B topper position. So that's a great information to know. 
so uh, one question that arises in my mind is like no or what is the right age to catch these people or is there is there any age beyond which you can't uh, do anything ah good uh, question uh, actually we can uh, work uh, with a child from 4 uh, to 5 years of age okay okay so if they if we leave that age uh, so is it like uh, we can we do still do some therapy and improve or it is yes 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 okay. see only that uh, that number of years will be a lacune it's okay. from 4 years if you catch them okay. young then okay. the number of years lost will be less but okay. if you catch them at a later stage uh, still they will uh, Uh, have a lot of um, uh, improvement at any point of time never too late than ever that's what i tell my patients okay. and uh, everybody will come and say i didn't know this before i didn't know this before okay. this is the time that you are supposed to know so you have known it at this time that's all <laughs> nothing more we can uh, do about it what is lost we don't have to worry about it okay. just go from now on okay so uh, regarding this uh, autistic children so when we leave these people and just take the normal children nowadays even they lack uh, uh, concentration and focus and uh, no nowadays they are exposed to the gadgets and uh, how does it affect the visual perception skill this uh, modern okay. day lifestyle okay so the, the everything is on the develop rests on the whatever difficulties that the child is facing uh, rests on the developmental stages okay so uh, uh, basically we are not supposed to show gadgets before 2 uh, years of age first okay. thing i'll tell you why it is and second thing is like even if they are exposed to gadgets it should be only for uh, say half an hour or one hour a day but then because of covid the scenario is changed but then that's okay whatever is necessary can be done but unnecessary things should be really avoided what happens is the uh, the visual system is not ready to pick up motion sensation before 2 years of age okay so when you show gadgets it's a motion picture okay so if you see uh, uh, mickey and donald chasing the child does not know whether to concentrate on the mickey or on the donald and The, it goes in such a speed that the child does not uh, loses it he starts with the starting point that before the uh, mickey goes to the other end the child's eye will go so what happens in between the child has failed to track the information whatever has happened the child has failed to track information so his his eye movement is so trained that it will always jump from one end to another end it will not track so now in the classroom when he comes to 4 years or 5 years when he is asked to fixate on the teacher the child cannot do because he is not used to static vision he is more with a dynamic vision that's where he goes sees through the uh, he flits through the windows he goes sees the who is coming he sees up he sees down he cannot put your is eyes in a static position on the teacher okay that's where he is lost in the class okay so uh, so uh, this gadgets has a uh, very 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 drastic so even now at any stage if we give them what happens is the uh, the information if he is going to be uh, this temple run what is that uh, uh, games no that that uh, that is the worst thing that you can ever give to the visual system okay uh, the uh, brain the eyes cannot cannot uh, um, uh, rest when uh, you give uh, such a fast moving motion uh, games okay so that 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 really affects your cognitive ability because you are losing a lot of information tracking is one of the very important skill that should be um, kept in uh, kept intact so that you give get good information about the environment that you are working in isn't it so the, the child is lost the child cannot uh, uh, track one sentence that is written on the board because he is uh, doing temple run no from d he will go to the next uh, sentence d so he will lose half way he will copy 
half he will not copy before copying teacher will rub the board okay all these sorts of uh, things happens okay so we will have to uh, de-learn the uh, child and ask him to relearn the correct process of moving his eyes okay uh, Deepika has shown a lot of uh, worksheets you know yeah. um, uh, arrows worksheet yeah. she has uh, shown okay all this will help you to move from one object to another object if you uh, use those worksheets and train the eyes then a appropriate movement of the eyes can be trained so if the child uh, gains his efficiency in using his eyes then probably in his day-to-day -day life also he will use the same amount of uh, uh, skill okay so he will normally get integrated into the uh, academic system hope that answers your question thank you yes ma'am our uh, our senior uh, faculty, uh, Ms. Jemima. Jemima, ma'am, is also joined. Yeah. Welcome, ma'am. Hello, Jemima. Hmm. Hi. Hi, ma'am. Hi, ma'am. How are Hello, you? Ma Hello, Jemi. How are you? Yeah, yeah, fine. Excellent session. Great. Thank you. So, you want to add anything, Ms. Jemima? I'd like to ask about the compliance when we teach these exercises to these children. How hmm. much uh, are they? able to do the exercises and get back? Jemmy, it is not like you uh, have them uh, do one day and uh, see them after a month. That doesn't really work. Okay. You call them for in-office sessions. Uh, um, I would prefer five days a week. But if uh, because of other uh, uh, infrastructure difficulties or from the um, the travel difficulties, at least uh, three days a week you have. Okay. If you are have, going to give it as three days a week, you should always have a parent partner who will do the rest of your work on the rest of the three days. Mm -hmm. Okay. Otherwise, it is not going to help you. A one day, one hour session is, is not going to help you in any way. That will, in fact, uh, uh, defame you. <laughs> because uh, because uh, simply we go, we went to that, he gave some exercises. No, it will defame you. No, don't do that. You call for, uh, uh, it will be like a three-month session or a six-month session, depending on the child's uh, abilities. You take some two or three goals. Say, suppose I'm going to develop fixation and eye movement skills. Okay, that's your goal. You uh, you work for uh, some, uh, see anything it takes 21 weeks to observe that uh, 21 days of uh, session, 21 sessions to uh, observe what is there in that context. You will have to observe that context. Another one week, seven days uh, to uh, work on that context. And if you have to gain efficiency, another uh, one week you should have. Okay. So at least four to five weeks for one uh, uh, goal it would require to, get, to, to gain the efficiency in that goal. Okay. So that is how you should uh, plan. You should, uh, whatever the uh, patient's uh, uh, complaints, you take those complaints, okay, Add, uh, arrange them in a sequential uh, developmental order, okay, which comes first, which develops next, which develops next, arrange them in a uh, sequential order. So right from the earliest skill, okay, you start uh, developing them uh, in a sequential manner, uh, like uh, how much the child, how many goals that the child can hold. If it is a bigger child, he can hold some three to four goals uh, in a session. Whereas if it's a younger child, younger child, we can work with just one or two goals in a session. Okay. So like that, you plan those uh, sessions and uh, you give the therapies. Only then you will be successful. Thank you so much, ma'am. So we quickly run through the answers for the quiz, ma'am. We had five quiz today. So we quickly run through. I request Meenakshi, ma'am, to share the slides and run through. And thank you for all the participants and the YouTube audiences for sending us your answers. We quickly see what answers you got right. Thank you, Gomati. As Gomati said, we'll quickly see up the answers for the first quiz which says about the visual attention. We asked you two questions. How many people do you see in the pool? And the second question is, how many trees have been appreciated? 
I guess many of you have answered correctly. We see four people in the pool as well as four number of trees in the picture. This actually develops your visual attention towards the picture. Then based on visual discrimination, we bought a picture which uh, actually tells you the five differences for first, first and second picture. I guess only one girl, Archana, has answered it all correct. Yes, Archana, it's eyebrows, teeth, the star in the dress, the dots of the belt and the shoelace. Next one is form consistency. Which shape was cut out of, out of the box? And the shape can be turned. The correct answer is answer number one. Because the second one is screwed up, third one is having an irregular shape, fourth one, the edges were cut. So only the first one will resemble the form consistency of the cutout box. The fourth quiz is visual closure. I guess many of you have answered correct for the visual closure, uh, including the intents. So the first image will portray the star. Second image is actually the plus, not the square. Third one is actually the ball. Fourth one is the upward arrow mark. Last one about the visual memory. We showed you four animals. And then we asked you to guess out the missing animal. It is actually the elephant. See, the elephant picture alone is missed out. This will tell about your visual memory. How well you can recall about the animal scene. Thank you. Over to Gomati. Thank you, Meenakshi. Now I request uh, Mahimam to share about the fellowship details. So uh, this is a, a nice session that we had. And uh, I take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you. So I am uh, I'm also uh, announcing uh, there is a fellowship program in Dr. Agarwal's Institute of Optometry, which is uh, uh, purely a one uh, 18 months program. So this is going to be a research plus a clinical internship uh, fellowship program. So where the student will be uh, totally uh, involving into the research for uh, six months. So they'll be learning the basics of research, statistics, etc. And uh, then they'll be posted uh, in the clinics and further data collection and a complete uh, 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 research uh, uh, activity followed by the publication possibility is also there. So this possibility is there. You can make use of this opportunity. So I once again thank our uh, um, uh, moderator, uh, Ms. Valarmadi, for uh, uh, sparing her a, a valuable time with us and uh, explaining everything in detail. And it was it was very, very clear. And I just got the message from our Dean Madam also. The, the session was very clear and there was much clarity with which you have explained. Thanks, uh, uh, thanks to Deepika also. You've done a good job. Okay, over Thank to you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you so much, Valarmati, ma'am. We're looking forward to host you in another session as well as ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. It's yeah. my pleasure. Thank you, ma'am. I thank all our audiences, YouTube audiences, and few people have joined in Zoom live also. Thanks for them as well. If you have any questions regarding today's session, please post it in the comment box. We'll get back to you with the answers. For knowing more updates about Dr. Agarwal's Institute of Optometry, do follow our Instagram and Facebook page. I'll provide with the link in the description. Thank you all so much. Meet you all in the third episode of Optometry Series. Tata, bye-bye. If you like this video, give a thumbs up, share, and comment on this video. Thank you all so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Ma